Okay, so here's your hot point machine. These hot point machines tend to burn these switches because people turn them too hard and they'll break. They'll come loose, so this one has been replaced and a new one glued in. I got this basically this way and I glued in a new switch. So we're gonna check this one inside, see what it looks like inside on this GE hot point style. There's these two screws, one here and one there that have to come off. And these ones are really tight. <coughs> That's one screw. It helps if you push down on the top when you try and undo it. Push down on the top. That might do it. Once you've done that, you can pull the top off and then disconnect the the front body by some screws here and here on the front side and then we can take this off and take a look at it inside okay so this is like the main bearing here this one is a little thin but it's still there put a couple of drops of tri-flow on it and it'll last quite a while see we've got a lot of lint built up here and so here for some reason that has come disconnected so that would cause it not to heat for some reason that was disconnected all the other wires seem good don't try this at home consult your local professional I do give phone consultations for a fee if you're interested, you can contact me, 707-443-8347 Pacific Time. I also have a training course in appliance repair. I take two new students per year, and I teach you all about appliance repair and share my experience with you and give you business coaching advice as well in that training course. So here's the tri-flow. This is the superior lubricant. Let's put a couple of drops here. Now this actually has a switch on it. So there's a switch that senses the tension on here and switch down there. Senses the tension. If this tensioner is not set to trip that switch on when the belt is on then you may have to adjust this or the tang on the switch um, and if your belt does break the machine tur automatically turns off and that's what that switch is for it's a turn off switch when this belt breaks it turns it off so it doesn't overheat that drum in one place so we can't test uh, the action of the igniter and the uh, flame sensor we have to set the belt tensioner to tell the machine that it has a belt. And then we can turn it on. And then watch to see what happens. So basically in about two minutes or a minute or so, you should see the igniter glowing. And once the igniter glows, then it tells the heat uh, sensor that there is an ignition and you should hear the valve coils open up i don't have this hooked on to gas i'm just doing a dry test on it and let's uh, turn it on and see what happens make sure that door is shut some reason might be that switch is not activated enough does not want to stay on at this point for some reason okay, so that has to be activated and so what we're looking for we're looking for a glow down here we see the glow and in about a half a minute that should shut off and you'll hear the valve coils open there it is so that's a dry test and 
that is a good way to do a dry test. Probably it's 90% accurate. Um, if it goes through that sequence, then you got a good dryer. You don't have to have gas hooked up to it to test it that way. If you see the glow, then it shuts off. Then you hear the ignite, the uh, coils open. Then you should be good. And thanks for watching.